This is one of the world's most famous optical illusions, the Mueller Lyre illusion. You probably already know that the two lines shown here are exactly the same length. Still, you can't help but perceive the top line as being longer than the bottom. But what if there's a way to not fall for this illusion? Well, that depends on who you talk to. When researchers gave this illusion to a sample of Americans in 1966, the bottom line had to be 19% longer before subjects perceived both lines as equal. This would have looked like this. But the moment you step outside of industrialized countries, the Mueller-Lyre illusion becomes significantly weaker and can even disappear. For example, one African tribe living in the Kalahari Desert didn't see this illusion at all, correctly reporting that both lines were the same length. Now, that's not the only optical trick that varies across culture. Take a look at these two lines. They're exactly the same length. Now watch as I draw this parallelogram around it. Suddenly, line A looks much longer than line B, right? And if I take it all away, you go back to seeing them as the same length. This is called Sanders parallelogram. Once again, people living in industrialized societies are more susceptible to this illusion than those living in small-scale societies. Even fundamental things like color can be seen differently. For example, the Dani tribe in Western New Guinea only use two terms to describe all colors. Mili represents cool dark shades such as black, green and blue, whereas Mola represents warm light shades such as red, yellow and white. This lack of descriptive variety consequently made them worse at remembering colors when compared to English speakers. Now, these differences are only at the basic level of vision. Imagine what happens when you look at the higher level of psychological processing. In particular, psychologists have focused on the differences between Western and non-Western countries. Perhaps the most well-established difference is that Westerners tend to be more individualistic. This means they emphasize the rights of the individual and value things like independence and freedom of choice. On the other hand, non-Westerners are more collectivist. This means they emphasize the goals of the group and value things like interdependence and cooperation. Now, these differences actually give us an opportunity to evaluate our society from an outsider perspective. For example, in the West, a lot of our cultural messages are clearly individualistic. How many times have you heard phrases like, be yourself, or don't worry about what others think of you? But from a collectivist mindset, this can seem sort of selfish. In many cases, following such advice would mean ignoring the consequences of your actions on others. Instead, collectivist cultures would be more likely to sacrifice the needs of the individual in order to satisfy the needs of the group. But then again, from an individualistic perspective, this could easily be seen as demeaning. Hence, cultures influence how much importance we place on the individual. In fact, you'll find that as Japanese people get more exposure to Western culture, their self-esteem rises. But perhaps the most unexpected difference relates to schizophrenia. One of the key symptoms of schizophrenia is hearing voices. These voices are known for being torturous. Patients often report their voices calling them worthless, telling them to harm others, and even telling them to commit suicide. While there were some positive aspects, not one person would label the overall experience as positive. But surprisingly, when Stanford professor Tanya Lerman studied schizophrenics in India and Ghana, about half of them reported their voices as being a predominantly positive experience. One patient said the voices gave him helpful and protective advice. Others even developed a close relationship to the voices, describing them as playful and entertaining. Now, there definitely were negative experiences too, but in general, schizophrenia was better in these non-Western countries. So, as you can see, from visual tricks all the way to mental illness, culture plays a huge role in how we come to view the world. So, how does your culture shape you?